social media objectives, what am I trying to achieve with it? Well, they're no different. They're, they're exactly the same as anything else. You're trying to make money and you're also trying to execute that why stuff you were talking about, right? But, you know, there's a, there's a profit component in here. We know we need that, otherwise we're not in business and we fall over. Uh, so I break that up into three different uh, categories. Different people call them three different other categories. But I use revenue, short-term revenue, long-term, and then cost, so reducing cost. So that makes money. Uh, so some of the things that we're looking at for referral, we're trying to measure in the short term, is just we obviously want more referrals. That's one of the expectations we have coming to a social media conference. We're going to be able to go back and we're going to be able to get an increased rate of referrals from our clients. We're also going to get increased client increase. So that's when we do a campaign, what used to be a marketing campaign, and we used to measure those. Everyone uh, who did that marketing one-on-one -on -one subject at uni knows you need to measure the outcomes. Uh, so we're going to need to be um, measuring the same from our social media, and what we want is increase. So you do a child trauma campaign or you do a TTR campaign, you need to know are uh, you getting more inquiries on that particular topic. And then increased rates of conversion. So even if you have the exact same number of people coming in, because we work to solve that no like and trust issue and because we've uh, built that positive perception around us via social media ahead of time, this is the intention, this all gets covered, um, then we should be getting an increased rate of conversion. Reduce principal dependency. Uh, one of the things that actually drives me absolutely nuts is when I hear an older advisor saying, uh, yeah, social media, um, uh, well, I'm kind of retiring soon anyways, actually, so I'm not going to learn anything new. Um, and, and that actually drives me completely insane because uh, one of the things that you can really scale very well is removing principal dependency. That's going to reduce your long-term cost. Uh, so, uh, you know, in terms of building the, the profile that's easily scalable without the guy actually being in the business and, out, and without actually uh, providing the advice himself. It allows you to remove that principal dependency, so be it from a retiring advice when a book's being transferred, be it uh, anything, uh, even just your valued long-term staff who you know, can get hit by buses and the like. It doesn't need to be a CRM though. It can be Excel, can be a whiteboard, can be using Monopoly money, gold stars, high fives. As long as you write it down somewhere, you can track this with just about anything and it's simple, simple stuff. I mean, uh, all the old sales guys who've done those older sales courses will know you need to be having this stuff and maybe just have a whiteboard somewhere in the office. It's old school, but it still stands true. You might not drive your content based on what people are searching because, you know, it comes from you and your heart and all that stuff. So if you're going to be doing that, then that's fine. But Think about how you actually name it. Uh, so I, um, I did a, a couple of uh, tutorial videos and had them posted up. I was just thinking, hmm, I took a look at similar tutorial videos and they were actually getting a lot more views or they were getting far better results than these were. Took a look at the AdWords. The dumbest thing ever was putting tutorial in the title. Guide was what needed to be there. Same content, renamed it Guide, hits went up. So things like that will actually help your results as well. So uh, even if it doesn't drive your content, it should drive your naming, drive your, uh, drive your relevant keywords and stuff that you're putting in uh, your content as well.